The spring anime of 2021 seasons. <laughs> God, this video is late. The spring anime 2021 season is, in my opinion, the best season of anime we've had so far this year. There were a lot of good new shows airing and not enough people who knew about them. And I think part of the reason for that is the sheer amount of sequel seasons that were set to come out this year. ReZero, Promise Neverland, Attack on Titan. This is just a small portion of the sequels set to release in winter 2021 alone. When you look at the spring season through the same scope of sequel after sequel, it doesn't exactly inspire a lot of confidence. And as a result, anytime somebody watched a good show this season, it automatically became the best show. Hey guys, to your eternity, masterpiece, 10 out of 10, best show of the season. Nah, 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 what are you talking about? Vivi, baby, Vivi Fluoride Eye song. Now this is the greatest anime I've ever seen. <laughs> Wait a minute, you're not talking about, oh, Taxi, are you the greatest show in the- Too many great shows flew under the radar this season, even the ones I just mentioned. To the point where the best possible way I could think to describe this season is quite simply underrated. Alright, to get the easy ones out of the way, first up we have Nagatoro. <laughs> 0 out of 10. I did not watch Nagatoro. I did not want to feel secondhand bullied by this character. I can kind of see the appeal of this show to some extent, what with this character becoming less of a dick over time, but I just don't want to watch this guy getting bullied, man. That's why instead I chose to watch Tokyo Revenge. <laughs> The main difference between Nagatoro and Tokyo Revengers is I actually watched Tokyo Revengers. This main character looks fucking stupid. What happened to his hair? Why is he trying to go Super Saiyan? What is the deal with the MC Hammer Pants? In the first episode, everything comes off as so cheesy. That being said, this show is actually really fucking good, Jesus Christ. This character is a fucking loser. Ain't that what we love to see in anime? Let's go, baby! He's weak and spineless. Any and all edge he might have had previously was lost to middle school. The most terrifying time to be a child. For this reason, when this character goes back in time, seeing him regain and harden his resolve in the face of some of his most nightmarish childhood memories is one of the most satisfying things about this show. Definitely worth a watch. 86 was another show a lot of people seem to be excited for. It was alright. 86 had the potential to be an amazing show, but I think it really fell short in that it didn't know what kind of story it was trying to tell. To briefly explain, 86 is a show about the discrimination of the colored. Haired people. That's right, if you are not the white haired character, you are not alright. In fact, you are sent off to fight in the war against these weird nameless robots. And my main issue with this show is the split focus they have between the crew of 86 and their commander, who they refer to as Handler 1. This thing is not the commander though, she's the commander. Now you'd think it would try to follow the ever growing relationship between the crew and their silver haired commander, but this just isn't the case. Instead, it tries to tell the tragic tale of the 86 crew, but struggles because it's busy balancing with the main character's story. And as a result, a lot of the more emotional scenes fall short to me. I don't understand enough about these characters to sympathize with them. A little clarity can go a long way, and 86 really needs to figure out what kind of story it's trying to tell. Just whose story is this? I realize I'm being very critical of 86, but I really think the show has the potential to become something really special. It's a beautiful show with a story that deserves to be told to its absolute fullest. Come on, season 2, let's go. Speaking of season 2s... Down is in there, baby. Gridman is one of my favorite animes of all time. Just don't watch my video on it, please and thank you. The atmosphere and seamless interactions in Gridman feel so natural. Sometimes the best soundtrack you can have is the ambience of nature, or the atmosphere of a classroom. Dina Zenin feels no different, as it does a great job at maintaining this naturalistic tone. Despite being a monster of the week show, it really focuses more on the personal lives of the characters involved, and making them feel genuine. Struggling to cope, find closure, or even just transition into adulthood. In spite of initially coming off as just a recoloring of the first Gridman series, Dina Zenin did an amazing job at really differentiating these characters and creating an entirely different story. Watch Dine's on it. Watch it now. Watch it! Higehiro actually managed to make history as being the first show that Cloverworks did not butcher the ending to. Yo, you lying, nah! I'm almost certain that every single person who watched this show experienced the same exact thing at first. After being rejected, I shaved and took in a high school runaway. What kind of title is that? There's no way it's that bad, right? You know what? I'll give it a go. It wouldn't really be something that bad. It's probably a decent show. Oh, alright. No, 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 no. 
Hell no. The show is actually surprisingly wholesome, heartwarming, and heartbreaking at the same time. It did an especially good job at creating tense and uncomfortable situations. I think if only they had a bigger budget to work with, they might have really been able to take these more emotional sequences to the next level. All in all, still a story I really came to appreciate and definitely one I'd recommend watching. What does it mean to sing from the heart? I don't know, and you probably won't find out if you're watching this. Vivi seemed like a show that had a lot to unravel and only 13 episodes to do. And all things considered, they actually did a pretty good job. Vivi is a show about preventing eye robots, but with an idol. However, the idol is also a robot, trying to figure out just what does it mean to sing from the heart. Why did my creator task me with some ambiguous bullshit when I'm a robot? The show then tries to balance this internal struggle with some absolutely absurd action sequences. And honestly, the action sequences are what really sell the show. I feel like it's a struggle to keep up with Vivi's growth when every episode is a time skip to the next big event. Instead, you'll see the rapidly developing world around Vivi, with the mostly stagnant Vivi up to a certain point. There were a few episodes where I'd go, holy shit, I can't believe what just happened. Vivi's never experienced anything like this before. How will she manage? How will she react with such a drastic and traumatizing event ha And then it just cuts. It just cuts to 25 to 30 years later. There's a lot of character development that could be happening that just gets dismissed, tossed to the wayside by another fucking 50 year time skip or something. But I still think there's a lot to be appreciated when watching this show. So go ahead and give it a go. I'm sure a lot of people might find more meaning in this show than I did, and I'm quite sure most people would enjoy it. <laughs> Odd Taxi. God damn. Odd Taxi is an amazing mystery thriller show. Enter Odokawa the taxi driver. This is where everything in this show comes from and goes back to. The dialogue is snappy, immersing, and fun, and each character has their own distinct presence. I and many other people seem to agree that this show is comparable to a Tarantino movie. However, there are no feet, so this is actually debatable. Fucking amazing show. Watch it. Your Eternity is a beautiful show, one that I have gone back and watched again and again in spite of the fact that it's literally still airing. The show follows the journey of an immortal being named Fuji as it essentially learns what it means to live. And I think the show is a lot more about the characters he meets than it is about himself, since after all he is a product of what he learns from them. Every character has a different set of values, morals, and skills, along with their own aspirations for the future, but at the end of the day, only one of them is immortal. The show is really fucking sad, but it's definitely worth a watch. Without you, I don't know if I could take this road. And I'm about to lose my mind. Link Click is, without a doubt, the coolest show of the season. Its opening, its ending, its art style, its animation, its characters, everything about this show is just fucking cool. Link Click is a dongwa, which is not an anime, following three friends who run a Photoshop business together. Our main duo here is actually capable of traveling back in time through photos, and often do so at the request of regretful clients in hopes of reconciling their past finally putting them at ease so they may move forward with their lives. And some of the requests the clients give are just some of the most basic requests out there, but it's just devastating given the context. Link Click is a show that maneuvers through its story and concepts masterfully, and has some of the most impressive cliffhanging ability I've ever seen in my entire life. The show is fucking great and not enough people have seen it, so that's why I strongly urge you to go and watch this show if you haven't seen it yet. But that honestly also goes for just about every show I mentioned in this video. Minus one. Seriously, nobody was expecting this amount of good shows to appear this season. But I'm glad it did, and I'm really hopeful about some of the great new series that might be coming up in the future. Anyways, it's looking like about time to make the same video for the summer 2021 season to make up for lost time. But there's only really one show to look out for.